I, I came up with my uh, son Trevor and his uh, son Trey. He's uh, 10 years old and uh, it was a great experience. He caught his first fish. He caught a 21 pound trout he's pretty proud of and uh, he's having lots of fun. The boys are looking after him good and we're really enjoying ourselves. Well, hopefully 50 to 100 years there's still people, Métis people traveling and using this land the way that we are today. I mean, sitting up here I can see for 20 miles in either direction. I don't see a person, I don't hear a, a motor, I don't see any planes, it's just absolutely beautiful and hope it stays this way. And it's so nice to be able to go somewhere where there's nobody around, you know, there's not boats and cars and people running around, it's just nice and quiet. We have the river here running into the lake, nice waterfalls right beside us. Camping here, we listen to that, it's, it's really nice, beautiful. Well, we've always been able, to, we're always able to hunt, so I don't see why any reason if they create a park why we can't hunt and use this land as we always did before. The only thing it'll do, it'll open it up for other people to come and use it, which is fine. I, I got no problem with other people coming and using and enjoying this land like we are. That's, I'm, I'm glad other people can do that, and and I hope more people come. But don't turn it into a Banff National Park where you got thousands of people everywhere you look. I mean, you know, a few visitors and people living in the communities around the lake. I think they should be able to come and use this park too. You know, it's so beautiful. It's nice to see. And then they tell other people and, and the word gets out that this is a beautiful land and we don't want to destroy it and we want to protect the environment and the land and the animals the best we can. So we have, we have them there for future use. Well, I've seen other national parks, what happened to them by, by overuse. And uh, I'd hate that to happen to this park. I mean, they want to create this park here to preserve it and keep it forever, which is a great idea. But at the same time, we still have to be able to come and harvest and fish and hunt like we used to, we used to and we've always done. I mean, there's been other Métis long before us that have been, been in this country and used it. And, uh, you know, they've been in here for probably hundreds of years. And uh, the land is still beautiful and hopefully it stays this way. Looking where I am here, I can see blueberries on the ground. It's nice, really nice. I've been here in the winter lots. I've, I've hunted caribou all around here, on the other end of the lake, up in the barren lands and all over. But the east arm in the summer, I've not, never actually been on this part of the lake. I've been on the other south, southern part of the lake lots for, for geese hunting and spring hunting and, and hunting moose not in the fall. But I've never been on this corner, this far northeast on this lake. and. Uh, it's beautiful. Uh, we've been to some of the places on the far end of the lake where it ends there, uh, where the people used to stay for the summer before they'd go to the barren lands. And we've seen where other trappers and hunters have lived over the years, and it's beautiful down that far end of the lake there, Pikes Portage. Oh, the water is so, so clear. The minute we got off the big lake there and start coming up the, this east arm, the water just turned really green this clear you could see look like you could see to the bottom of the lake we could actually see fish swimming down there as we're coming this slow with the boat we looked down we could see fish the water so clear and the water is cold really cold I think that's why the, the fish are so nice eating here the, the trout the, they're just nice and pink they look like arctic char actually and they're really tasty we had a couple good nice feeds of trout and some trout heads the other night there man well, the east arm was used in the in the early 20s. A lot of white trappers come into this area in Métis, uh, looking for white fox. As white fox used to be the, the most popular fur and the best money you can get. So a lot of people they traveled this route, Great Slade Lake, up to the end of the lake here to Pikes Portage, and on to the Barren Lands. And uh, it was uh, a lot of people used it. And uh, a lot of people had to live off the land here. They had to live off the fish, the caribou. Muskox is kind of a new species that moved in here within the last 20 years or so. But they might have been here before, we don't know. But uh, East Arm, it's a beautiful place. If you were to had to survive here, you could stop anywhere here, throw your hook in, and in no time you'll have a meal of fish quite easily. 
and uh, like yesterday, we're lucky enough to get a moose. And a moose is a real staple to these people's diet. They could make dry meat and they could save all the marrow bones. And, and they'd use the whole moose, do the hide and make clothing, make moccasins and make tents with the clothing and that. So every animal was used, every single piece of the animal was used. And it's very important. Well, I guess we got a moose so, and we let it hang up to cool off overnight. And this morning, all of us got at it. We, we all cut, wrapped, packed it, and we got it loaded in our boat now, and we're taking it home, even a marrow bone. So we're hoping to have a good feast down the lake here somewhere. Well, there were three of us. It didn't take long, half an hour, when we had it all cut up. So it was a nice, clean spot, nice, smooth rock. We pulled it up on the rock there and butchered it up and loaded it up, and away we went. Real nice animals in real nice shape. Now, one thing we noticed, in this east arm there's no bulldogs and, and a lot of bugs like this, this moose was killed in the slave river the back legs of that moose would be all the back part of their legs here would be all chewed up just raw from bulldogs and mosquitoes from biting it the, this moose yesterday we got there was none of that there's no sign of any insects bites on it at all and it was in real nice shape even in the ears, if you look in the ears in a moose in the summertime, you'll see they're all full of little bugs in there that get in their ears. But this one here, there was just about nothing. We were really surprised. And uh, it's a lot of rock country here. And there's a lot of fireweed around. There's, there's birch and fireweed. That looks like to be the main diet of these, of these uh, moose around here. And uh, little small willows. Whereas further south, it's a lot more poplar and red willow and stuff. But they got a little different uh, type of vegetation up here that the moose seem to live on. And uh, we just had some of that meat this morning and it's got a different taste to it. They taste different than the moose we're used to eating along the Slave River. They don't have that willowy taste. Oh yeah, yeah, Sonny Collins was with us when we killed the moose and he's 80 years old. Boy, that guy could bend over and touch his toes and he was in there with his knife just to give her. And I wish when I'm 80 years old I can do what Sonny does. He's just an amazing guy. Everybody's still up. He's up first thing in the morning drinking coffee, 5.30 in the morning watching the lake. And hopefully I can enjoy my life like he does when I'm 80. He's a, he's a real example for, for a Métis. My cousin Richard Murky and I and my son and that we've hunted caribou in that, you know, east of here up towards the Barrenlands and along that southeast shore and that. And, it's such beautiful country, it's, you have to really see it to really know what's there. And uh, hopefully the people that use the, use the land take care of it. If they take garbage and stuff out, out here, bring it back and leave your campsite nice and clean and make sure your fire's out and just leave the land the way it was and hopefully it'll be here forever. <laughs>